All right, so I have a good friend who is a football fan, not really a football nerd like myself, and um, recently, so with bowl season and with the uh, playoffs in the NFL sort of kicking off, uh, he started in some of his broadcasts running into the term lock and level. And what happened was that he... Uh, he encountered this term and the broadcast didn't really do a good job of sort of explaining what exactly that meant. Uh, and so I'm sure what happened is that most of the time he encountered a situation where uh, the offense was using um, sort of condensed uh, wide receiver sets. So we've got two or more wide receivers that are close together and uh, the defense is playing in uh, man coverage and because of some kind of crossing route then uh, it was creating problems and they were offering the solution of lock and level as what the defense needed to do so uh, let's look at this example here so i've got two defensive players these are my two defensive backs and we have these two wide receivers, they're fairly close. We're gonna pretend like they're in man coverage. They're as tight to the line as possible uh, to try and take away the space and the movement of the wide receivers. And so this is pretty good plan. Uh, the only problem with it is if we have a situation where our outside receiver goes like this and our inside receiver goes like that, then um, these defensive backs, because they're on the same uh, plane vertically, if one of them starts moving uh, laterally like that, there's a chance that they're going to have a collision. Uh, and so maybe, uh, oh, well, here, we'll just do this. We'll just, uh, we'll rebuild my little offensive set there. And um, so that, uh, what I drew the first time is called a switch release, may not give the most problems, but it is uh, still a little bit of a problem. Um, so we'll draw them up a little bit tighter and closer together. And so maybe we have something uh, from the offense that looks more like uh, this. And in this situation, so we're going to have this inside receiver go right out to the flat. And this inside receiver is kind of going to go over to a curl. And so that's going to create a situation where uh, this defensive back is especially going to move uh, laterally to try and match that. And this defensive back is going to move laterally this way. And so there's a chance of a, uh, a collision. Uh, which is a problem for the defense, right? And so uh, one of the solutions to this is play what they call lock and level. So in lock and level, we're still in man coverage. That's where the lock comes from. But we're going to put these defensive backs on different vertical levels of the defense so that if they move laterally, they have a lot more space uh, to sort of uh, move and match their receivers horizontally uh, without colliding. And this works um, if you have two receivers uh, like this, we can add another receiver and another defensive back. And it still works out. Now in a situation like this, commonly you're gonna see as we're moving inside towards the ball. Uh, the levels are going to get deeper. Uh, part of that's just sort of the structure of the defense tends to get deeper as you move in towards the ball. Uh, so like as you look, the safety sort of get deeper. And so we've got three receivers and we have three defensive backs in man coverage. They're all on three different levels to, <coughs> uh, to match their motions. And if they start doing any kind of crisscrossing, uh, then the defensive backs have space uh, 
to sort of match uh, without getting in each other's way and creating a pick or a rub. Uh, we'll even see this if they get more condensed and they get into something like a bunch. So we have our three receivers very tight together. They're in sort of this arrowhead shape. Um, and then they will still match up and they can play lock and level uh, with them this way. Um, the only time that lock and level becomes somewhat problematic, uh, I say the only time, uh, one of the formations where you might not want to play it is if you get any kind of stack. So let's imagine we've got our two receivers here and we're going to stack them one right behind the other. And so this, in this sort of situation, uh, lock and level, you're not going to want to match them exactly. It's going to present problems for you because if we have your defensive backs stacked up this way, it becomes very easy for um, these, uh, these defensive backs to get screened. So all we have to have is this one block come off here and then we make a quick throw to this wide receiver and they essentially have a two way go. They're just going to look and try and see which direction the unblocked defensive back goes and then they're going to try and go that way. And so anytime uh, you get a stack, you're probably going to want to move into something a little bit different. And you may say to yourself, what are some of the options for something a little bit different? Well, the first uh, option that we'll run into, or that's uh, sort of common, uh, is what's called banjo coverage. Banjo coverage is kind of like a hybrid man zone. Um, sometimes it's often described as a switch in basketball, and it can be coached that way. Um, but most often when you read about it, it's more like a z uh, man coverage, but these defensive backs don't pick up their man until uh, one of them, uh, they, till they declare which direction they're gonna go. So in this case, our, this outside receiver here is going to take whichever receiver goes to the outside, and our inside receiver is gonna take whichever receiver goes to the inside. So if they just run, straight verticals up the field, then nothing really changes. They're just going to match up with the receiver over top of them and um, they're going to play them in man coverage. Another option is if this receiver goes inside, like they're going to go on a slant and we have this receiver go outside, uh, like they're going to go to a, a flat route, then these defensive backs are going to pick up. So this defensive back that's on the outside is going to have good leverage against that flat route because they're already outside and they're just going to take this person man to man and this wide receiver or i'm sorry this defensive back should have good leverage because they're already on the inside and they're going to take on this slant route man to man uh, and often uh, you'll even see teams sort of extend them out so that their initial alignment will be a little bit outside of this outside receiver and a little bit inside of this inside receiver uh, to provide even more leverage uh, so that they uh, can play those routes really effectively. Now, um, the only, uh, I say the only, I'll say a, uh, a major um, potential problem with playing coverage like this is if both receivers sort of go into the same zone. So we'll say this one goes up and then this guy goes immediately out like that uh, and that can be a case where um, this receive or this defensive back here is sort of behind the play a little bit and that's why you'll sometimes uh, see coaches describing it as playing a, a switch in basketball and in that case the coverage starts out where it's essentially man to man 
and if my man-to-man -man receiver starts going towards the outside then the defensive backs going to look and see if the outside receiver is coming in and then they'll have some kind of communication where they can execute a switch and pass them off and this defensive back is going to do the same thing we're going to start in man and if my receiver starts going in I'm going to use my eyes and look and see if this one comes towards the out and then we're going to engage in some kind of communication to switch those out so that this uh, defensive back now becomes the outside player and this one becomes the inside player that's uh, one possibility but most commonly uh, whenever the term banjo is used it's more like a these um, defensive backs don't exactly have a player assigned to them yet um, who they pick up in man coverage is determined once these receivers start running rounds we can run a similar concept uh, once we add in uh, another receiver and they want to try and play something out of a bunch uh, there's a couple different names you might see it by the one that I've most commonly seen it is called traffic and essentially we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna have except we're gonna have this point defensive back is gonna be playing up tight to the line of scrimmage playing hard man-to-man -man coverage on this point uh, wide receiver in the bunch. And then these two defensive backs are basically going to play uh, banjo coverage on the remaining receivers. So they're taking the exact same concept that you just worked with with two receivers. And uh, we're going to bring in a, a third defensive back that plays tight man-to-man -man coverage on the point and essentially eliminates that third complication. Uh, so that you can play the exact same concept uh, with the remaining uh, defensive backs and the uh, remaining wide receivers. These are the kind of things that you're more likely to see whenever you get a stack because if we have them stacked up like that, it's essentially this defensive back and wide receiver sort of eliminate one another in, um, in sort of the, the coverage and it reduces it down almost till there's two and depending on which way these receivers go uh, I have a defensive back to play them and sort of counter uh, whatever routes they're trying to run and if they're trying to set up a screen uh, I have the freedom to sort of move multiple uh, defensive backs over to to that side to sort of counter it and so it makes it a little more complicated uh, to try and run a screen against it as opposed to if one of them was stacked here and they're sort of already screened off and it gives the, the receiver a lot of freedom. Um, once you start getting into the more complex things, you start adding in that third receiver, especially uh, in a bunch formation, uh, you'll see a lot of different variations. So one of them uh, is instead of trying to play uh, these man concepts and trying to make them work um, in a way where um, these defensive backs don't have a potential of colliding, they don't have uh, sort of a conflict on the crisscrossing routes, is they'll play. The defense has the option to play something that's more like a zone. And one of the first zones uh, that you'll see played against a bunch like this um, is commonly called triangle because that's how your defensive backs align uh, and so uh, we'll move these over here so they can get in the way uh, now we have uh, three defensive backs and they're going to play sort of a triangle zone and their responsibilities are sort of like uh, again similar to banjo uh, but with a deep player so we'll have for example this player is going to go deep and that means this defensive back is going to take them deep and we'll have a crisscross here where this defensive back is going to take the low inside receiver and then another cross here these defensive backs going to take uh, the low outside receiver and there's really um, uh, whatever combinations you try and break out on them so we'll run something that sort of looks like 
a snag. We'll have a corner route. So of course this deep defensive back is gonna take that corner route. Uh, we'll have something go inside that looks like a curl route. It's essentially gonna be running right towards that defensive back and they're gonna take that one. And then we have a flat route, which this defensive back is in a good position to take. And the beauty of it is since it's zone-like, um, but still, uh, well, so, so this triangle zone provides um, a lot of advantages to, uh, to playing these condensed bunch sets. Uh, the only, I say the only, again, um, a potential drawback of it is that um, you are still getting one-on-one -on -one matchups because there's still only uh, three defensive backs to play these three wide receivers. And so if one of these assignments runs into a difficulty, then uh, you may have a mismatch uh, somewhere in your coverage. And one of the ways that they will, uh, the defense will try and solve that is but we're going to bring in a fourth defensive back and they're going to play a coverage called box box uh, again looks pretty much like the shape um, so this uh, high outside receiver is going to play any routes that come to him uh, on the high outside this high inside defensive back is going to play any routes that come to the high inside and it's the same. We have a low inside player and a, uh, a low outside player. And so that creates a situation where, again, if we have something, uh, a route that starts up here, it doesn't really matter which way it breaks. I have uh, a defensive back ready there to make a play. And in some of these situations, I have an extra player that sort of just becomes a free zone player. And in this case, uh, it's going to be uh, this inside defensive back. They can sort of move because they don't have a route coming to them and perhaps help double here. Or if there's some kind of mismatch, they can come down here. It sort of depends on how the coaches want to play it, what's more important to them. Um, and of course, they can sort of move over. Um, if this becomes just a throw to this flat route, uh, then they have an extra tackler that can come over uh, like that. And it creates, um, it creates it. It gives you an extra player uh, playing here. So then now you're playing uh, four defensive backs over three instead of playing just three over three. And uh, it helps eliminate some of the potential for uh, mismatches. So those are the different possibilities. Um, we started out talking about lock and level. That's where we have, uh, we put our defensive backs on different levels vertically in the defense so that they have room uh, to maneuver and match with receivers if they cross. Banjo, which is waiting until the receivers sort of pick which direction they're going to go and then taking them in man coverage. And then as we add three receivers, especially in something like a bunch, playing traffic, which is a hard man-to-man -to, -man to eliminate that third receiver, and then playing banjo, uh, triangle, which is a, uh, a triangle-shaped three-person zone uh, to accept all of those different routes, and then box, which is a square-shaped four-person zone uh, that can match up to all those routes and then hopefully eliminate some of the matchup problems uh, because you have four defensive backs over three.